Hello, my crafty friends. Today I am sharing three mini Slimline cards that I made with a simple box pop-up, but I've turned it into sort of a floating platform inside. So it's just a different way to use those simple box pop-ups, and I actually have a tutorial for you in a little bit here. I just wanted to show you some of the cards. I did do three mini Slimlines, and I used a bunch of different things from my craft room some old, some new. If you follow me, you know my cards generally start with the patterned paper, and that is the case here as well. I used this gilded ink from Recollections, and some of the papers have got gold foiling on them, and some of them do not. I have picked up that pad well over a year ago, so I've been working on, on using that. And I love the bright, happy colors in it, and of course the alcohol ink blending is so pretty. So that is what I used kind of as my jumping off point. The second card is a birthday card. So I have a thank you card, I have a birthday card, and the one I'm going to do the tutorial on in a little bit is just a, an inspiration or happy mail card. I cut each of the pattern papers with this mini slimline stitched rope die from Cat Scrappiness and it does give a really nice detail around the edges and so I could place the die kind of where I wanted it on the pattern paper to make the best use of the pattern and then the inner panels all have that same rope edge as well. I used stickles for lots of sparkle, the flowers I'm going to talk about in just a minute, the mason jar and the stems that I, that I believe is called Jar of Love. It's a, it's a Stampin' Up set. I have no idea if it's still available or not. I don't sell Stampin' Up. So there was the mason jar stamp, the filler, the stems, and then several different floral arrangements that you can put on the top to make it work across all the seasons, and then a punch to punch out the mason jar. So that's what I used on all three of these cards here. And then the bling, those are from Glitter Dots. Now I've been using Glitter Dots for many years and I was getting them at Elizabeth Craft Designs. So if you peel off the backing, uh, which I usually do and that makes it easier to access the Glitter Dots. They're just stickers, but they're glittery. They give the look of a gem with no bulk. And I just love them. Now I'm, I finally stopped checking at Elizabeth Craft Designs because they were out of stock forever. But I know Ecstasy Crafts in Canada carries them and Stamp On It in the US also has a version of them. So that's an option if you're looking for them. These are an absolute staple in my craft room and I can't even tell you how many sheets I've gone through over the years. The sentiments on the front of the cards. So grateful for you, happy birthday to you, and you are simply fabulous. They are from Tailored Expressions. I believe it's their, their background simple strips uh, stamp. And then I used the simple strips die to cut those out. This one, because of the gold foiling, I, I just cut a slightly larger piece of gold foil cardstock and then fishtailed the end with scissors. I just thought the gold added something to it with the gold foiling there. Before I talk about the flowers, we'll just show, I'll just show you the stamps inside. So the thank you bunches and bunches and make a wish they all come true. They are from Penny Black's Special Sentiments. I keep showing this uh, stamp set. I absolutely love it. It's fairly new to my craft room. I've only had it about five months, but um, at the time I'm filming, Simon Says Stamp is no longer carrying it, uh, but I do have it linked to scrapbook.com. So if it's something that kind of appeals to you, grab that link and get it ordered because I think they might be discontinuing it, which horrifies me. Of course, I will just continue to keep using it, but I know viewers get inspired and then they are disappointed when it's no longer available. So that is the sentiment for there. And then the card we're going to do together, that thinking of you is a Stampin' Up! set. Happy thoughts. Okay, I'm going to move these kind of out of the way here. And then let's talk about the flowers. Those beautiful flowers, they are from the Divinity Designs. They're packaged in cello, so it's going to be a little bit noisy. This is the Beautiful Blooms Paper Die, Duo Set 2, Set 3, and then there's Set 1. Now these were available with the April 2021 Blessings Box, and I wanted to show you how they came and how I stored them. So you get the two different flowers in each of the packages, and then there is a coordinating die. So let me just show you here, I'll take them out of the packaging. 
So this is the dahlias and then the roses, and they are nice and heavy. They're, they're quite thick. Uh, they cut beautifully with the coordinating dies, but then they have such nice substance to them when you're adhering them with foam tape because of the heaviness of the cardstock. So then there are the coordinating dies. And as I said, I just store everything together in the bag. These are the dies for the flowers, and you just lay them through. I tape them on with removable tape, run it through, and you end up with all of these flowers. So no coloring required, and as I said, they're nice and thick. Now, these little packages here, these cello bags, they were probably um, left over from when I bought enamel dots or bling or something, some kind of an embellishment, and I store them on the back side of the dies, and I know when my bag is getting a little bit low, I can cut myself some more and get more flowers. Now, the Blessings box is a subscription. I did get these last year when I was guest designing for Divinity Designs, and I've just continued to use them and I believe I've made over 20 cards using the paper dye duos and I still have lots of flowers left and there were refill packs available as well. I will link the blessings box uh, on my blog which is in that description box below in case you're interested in checking them out. I believe once you are a subscriber you can also purchase past blessing boxes if they are available. So to start on the tutorial here it is just a different way to use the simple box platform now pretending that this was the card front you could do a top folding card and have it be a pop-up just move your pop-up box to the center and then have a nice kind of billboard that you can decorate but i thought it would be different to have sort of a floating platform as well oh and before i forget these mini slimlines are my favorite mini slimline size they are three and a half by six inches and they fit in those number eight or six and three quarter inch envelopes for mailing. This is the quarter inch crinkled seam binding from Stampin' Up. And that's another thing that I probably have ended up buying three different rolls of it as I go through a fair bit of it. Everything is also popped up on thin foam tape, which I've talked about in other videos. I get that at uline.ca. So let's get started on the pop-up. You're going to make a simple box pop-up and for that you need a strip of cardstock that is four and a half inches long, one and a half inches high. And that piece actually I cut from the scrap. When you cut your mini slimline cards, I cut the eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock. I cut it at six inches, rotate it and then cut it at seven inches, score it in the half at three and a half. Well, it was eight and a half inches, and when it's cut down at seven, I have a one and a half inch strip left over. So I just cut it down to four and a half inches, and that's what I was able to use for the box pop-up. So once you have your strip, you're gonna score it at three quarters of an inch, two and a quarter, and three inches, and then work all your folds. So they're all mountain folds. That's it, there's your box platform. And now we're gonna glue it inside the card and to do that you fold it in half. And you want your loose edges are what's going against the fold. So I'm gonna bring in my glue here. I usually use the Lineco pH neutral but I haven't got it in its little bottle yet so I'll use the art glitter glue and I'm going to adhere glue onto my little the, the three quarter inch score so just on this side here you do not go over onto the other side keep it folded in half nestle it right up against the fold of your card and close the card against it this glue does dry fairly quickly but i, I still give it a few seconds to grab hold then i'm going to open the card and I'm gonna add glue just to this last section here. I'm leaving it folded right in half, but only add glue to this outside section, this, this last one here. And once again, close the card against it. Give it a second to dry. I just think those florals are so pretty. They look really nice in windows and I still have a bunch of ideas for using them. I have notebooks where I jot down ideas and 
every time I get a new idea for these flowers, I rate it down and I probably have another 10 ideas to use those florals for. So my glue has set up and there is the pop-up platform. Now I'm going to glue this on. Wet glue is your friend here because you want a little bit of wiggle room. You don't want to glue it so that it, it sticks out the card when the card is closed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some wet glue on about the outer half. I'm going to add this inside and kind of make sure it's where I want it, top and bottom. Close the card and you can see it is sticking out so I need to shimmy it over a little bit more and that's where the wet glue gives you just that little bit of wiggle room. So I've shifted it over, close my card, that still needs to go a little bit more. And now it stays within the confines of the card so I can press down and make sure that that adheres nicely. I'm going to just put the pin back in my glue so it doesn't dry out and then there is the card. Now it does fold flat enough when you want to sign so you're not trying to write something in midair but it's, a, it's really quick and easy and just another way that you can use those uh, simple box platforms that I have shown before. Hitting that like button is a huge help for YouTubers. So if you enjoyed my video today, please hit that like button. I'd love it if you subscribe to see more of my cards and tutorials. And that's it for me today.